Pretty catchy song, huh? Hello, and today I'm gonna make a top 10 list of my top 10 guilty pleasures. These are the top 10 movies that I like, I know I shouldn't, they're either really bad, or they're either really good, or I've just... I have some reason to be embarrassed to like them. So here they are. Number 10, High School Musical. That's right, folks. I... I actually... I actually kind of like this movie. I mean, it's... It has some pretty interesting, cool stuff in it, uh, some cool music, and it's definitely definitely some original stuff, some original songs, some original dance numbers. You gotta give them some credit for that. The acting isn't horrible, and sure, it's like not exactly, it's like a big coming of age story of like breaking the social boundaries that, that's not totally original, but at least it's not as unoriginal as High School Musical 2. <laughs> I'll give it that. High School Musical 2 had, like, some good dance numbers, but ultimately this plot was just a total rehash of, of a million movies we've seen a million times before. But High School Musical had some fun, original stuff about it, and, yeah, I love the actors, which is great. Vanessa Hudgens, smoking hot, as always. Uh, especially Corbin Blue, he's really cool. I actually saw him live once. And, uh, o Alessia Rulin, I think that's how you say her name. She's, I like her, she's pretty hot, but this is not the disaster piece it's made out to be, okay? And you either like it or you don't, but I know I liked it. Number nine, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Let me make one thing perfectly clear, I don't consider this to be a good movie. I mean, I know it's bad for me. I know it's really not good. There are a lot of weaknesses about it. There's a lot of red shirt characters. The movie doesn't really have a central lead. There's the lighting is god awful. You can barely make anything out. I think there are se there are several scenes in the movie where I'm thinking there's I don't think you're supposed to tell what's going on here, man. And uh but uh the movie has some good things going for it. The Michelle was cool, the hybrid. She had some great stuff, and I love the idea of her impregnating already pregnant women. That's what that was really cool. There are there is some nice gore in the movie for you gore fests, for gore fanatics, and uh, it's a B movie is what it is. And it's good at that. It's a good B movie, but it's not a good movie. And again, you either like it or you don't. That's the same thing can be said for all of these movies. You either like them or you don't. Number eight, epic movie. That's right, as evil as Seltzerberg is, I have to admit, I honestly enjoy this movie. And before you ask, here are my opinions on the Seltzerberg movies. Date movie crap, disaster movie crap, meet the Spartans crap, vampires suck, not as bad as I was expecting, but still crap. Epic movie is the best of their movies, for sure. I mean, they have a lot of funny jokes in this movie. I love parodies, I just love the whole idea of them, and just... It's, if the jokes are good, and I actually liked a lot of the jokes in this movie. When I saw a trailer for this movie, I was just rolling on the floor laughing. Like, with the junk that comes out of the wardrobe, that's hilarious. Superman gag, even if it isn't, makes no sense in the context of a movie. Of the movie. It was funny. The act, again, the acting isn't terrible. I like Jim Mays, she's very cute. And uh, Fun fact, she actually married the guy who plays her brother in this movie. Is that technically incest? I don't know. I find this movie to be funny. That That's it. Number seven. Fantastic Four. This is... I, I like superhero movies. I like really cool, fun action movies. And Fantastic Four is all of the above. It has, It's a really fun, exciting movie. And... It does... Ha again, it has some really cool things about it. And, again... The action scenes are pretty spectacular. There was a big scene on the Brooklyn Bridge that has, was really cool. The finale was great. Even 
even though it does mostly go for comedy, it is mostly a comedy movie. But, uh, it's another, it has a great soundtrack, and as I'm sure you know by that Sum 41 song that iTunes refuses to let you buy, or you can just do what I did, buy the whole CD, and tell everyone who hasn't bought the CD yet, what are you complaining about? I've got the song. I got the same thing with the Sum 41 song for the Spider-Man soundtrack. I got them both. So, suck it. And, uh, but I think Fantastic Four is not a disaster. Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, however, not a horrible movie, but def not not as good as this one. But it has its weaknesses. I'll give it that. Number six, Scooby Doo and Scooby Doo Two: Monsters Unleashed. I put both of these on the list because, well, they're both pretty much the same movie. Actually. I think I like Scooby Doo Two is a little bit better. Scooby Doo, I've Scooby Doo is in an acquired taste. I mean, I I like many people only saw the first Scooby Doo for the trailer for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets back when it came out. But uh, I've come to appreciate Scooby Doo, even if the plot twist is way too dark. It's w really sick and really disturbing, and it does not belong in a kids movie. And when you consider that the writer of this movie went on to write and direct Slither, that's probably where the twist in this comes comes from. But the, they both have some pretty good jokes, really spot on casting with like Sarah Michelle Gellar and uh, Matthew Lillard. And uh, Scooby Doo Two was a lot of fun, especially some of the monsters were really cool for the monster freaks out there and. These movies also have some pretty good music. If you like Simple Plan, then you'll probably like these movies. Simple Plan and Sugar Ray are pretty big features in these movies. I'm one of those guys who really appreciates music and movies. Speaking of which, go to whatsong.com if you want to find songs you heard in movies. Shameless plug right there. But the Scooby-Doo movies aren't awful. They're, they're good comedies. They're, they're kind of fun, mystery f movies. And not that bad. Number five, Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Again, I kind of have to put both of these movies on the list. I think uh, Charlie's Angels, the first one, doesn't exactly hold up as well as the second one. The second one is just, they're both pure, fun action movies. They're like The Matrix Reloaded or Transformers, but unlike The Matrix Reloaded or Transformers, these ones are, they don't, they're not going for anything here. They're just only out to entertain. And what would you expect from the two-syllable director of Terminator Salvation? But, uh, the main reason I put these as guilty pleasures, they're, they're really fun, really cool action movies, really pumped with a lot of testosterone, which is weird considering all your main characters are girls. I put these as guilty pleasures because there's a lot, they really push it when it comes to suspension of disbelief. There's a lot of logic-bending moments in these movies. In fact, take a, take, you can play a drinking game at how many times they screw with logic in these movies. Go to Movie Mistakes and look up the pages of these movies to see how many times they break the, bent, the logic. And, uh, but still, they're fun, exciting action movies and nothing more, nothing less. Number four, Space Jam. Yeah, I know the nostalgia critic bash this movie to death, calling it, say, in, in what insane asylum could this movie possibly be considered good? Answer, my house. Because I love Space Jam. I mean... I grew up with a video cassette of this, watching this over and over and over and over again, and I loved it. I loved every second of it. It was just... It's the Looney Tunes playing basketball. I mean, it's like... It's every little kid's fantasy. You get... the Lo Seeing the Looney Tunes back is just amazing. I mean, and they ha It's... You can never outgrow the Looney Tunes. And yes, I like Looney Tunes back in action, too. I think it's a really cool, creative idea, having Looney Tunes in a spy, espionage, action movie. But, uh, I think that might be a little bit better than Space Jam, but Space Jam is the one that really gets the most hate, because I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, I mean, all, what else can I say? But well, welcome to the Space Jam. Number three, Alpha and Omega. I know I gave this a pretty much perfect review in my review of it way back when, after the spotlight. But I bought this movie on DVD, rewatched it, and it doesn't hold up. I'm sorry, folks, but it has a lot of 
you can tell it's really aiming for little kids humor. Humor is really for little kids and not a lot of injustice the adults will get. But the main reason is because I buy into the romance in, in, is in this movie. With Garth and Lily and Kate and Humphrey, I, I love these characters, and I really buy into them, and I want to see them together. And you got, that's got to count for something. I mean, if you can make these people care about cartoon wolves, who are, who, uh, romance between cartoon wolves, voiced by a bunch of celebrities, I mean, that, that's got to count for something. And the casting in this movie is perfect. I mean, Hayden Pantier, Justin Long, Christina Ritchie, the late Dennis Hopper, they're all great. I mean, this is one of those movies that you got to give a shot. I mean, kids will probably eat it up. Adults, <coughs> they probably won't hold up as well for you, to, for you guys, but uh, it's, n again, not a disaster, but yeah, some stuff. Number two, Digimon the movie. Yeah, I may be a digi-freak, but even I have to admit there are some really stupid things about Digimon the movie. Just, all that pointless dialogue, all that, those, there's some really stupid dialogue scenes in this movie. Like, uh, fair enough, I think some of it's supposed to be stupid jokes, but, uh, when I say stupid, I really mean stupid. I mean, it's kind of like a awkward cringing when those scenes come up when you're watching the movie. And that's not exactly a good sign, but I, just, I love this movie for a couple of reasons. One being the fact that it's Digimon on the big screen, which, again, at the time of its release was every kid's fantasy, seeing your heroes on the big screen. And it's going to be everyone else's fantasy when I finally make the live-action movie. I've got like 50 pages of the script written. And another one, because there are some really kick-ass scenes in this movie, like... Anything with Flame Dramon, as I said, the most badass Digimon around. There's some really cool one-liners in this movie if you know where to look for them. My personal favorite being, how do you like your Cyclone Mo How do you like a Kokomon, flame broiled or grilled? And that's just kick-ass. Almost because I, I don't know why I said Cyclone Mon. Totally separate Digimon. And as I said, it's another one, it's great to see the characters on the big screen. It's, but it's still a guilty pleasure because it's not exactly... A, there are some stupid scenes in it, but... Still. And num my number one guilty pleasure is... Brother Bear 2. Yeah, probably y'all saw this coming. I mean, I love this movie. I, I just love it. I love it to death. And like Alpha and Omega... It's mainly because of the characters and the relationship that I buy into. I want to see them together. And it's just, it's a nice family movie. And it's the one straight-to-DVD Disney sequel they actually put effort into. I mean, they got big stars like Mandy Moore, Patrick Dempsey, future Transformers star, Rick Moranis, and believe it or not, his last movie before retirement. So that's instantly earns this movie a, a spot in your Netflix queue. And, uh, it's... <laughs> this one it actually does have some good jokes. It has jokes that are says good kid jokes, some slightly good adult jokes, and uh, and what I love the most about this movie is the ending. Sure, it's predictable. Like, look at this DVD cover and tell me you can't see the ending coming. Just look at it. Like, if you can't see the ending coming, post it in the comments. <laughs> but. I know the ending is predictable, but it's still heartwarming when it finally comes up. I sound incredibly cheesy. I get this really warm, fuzzy feeling inside when I watch this movie. I've even got one of the songs from this movie on my iPod. That's right, I said it. I've got a Melissa Etheridge, Josh Kelly duet from a straight to DVD Disney sequel on my iPod. You know what? I'm not ashamed to admit it. By the way, I've also got M2M, Avril Lavigne. Formerly, I used to have Hannah Montana on there until I finally outgrew her. But, uh, I love, love, love Brother Bear 2. And it's, if you liked the first one, it's worth a rental. It's definitely worth the price. Actually, it's worth it, period. If you liked Brother Bear, see it. If you didn't like Brother Bear, you probably have to see the first one to catch up, but even if you didn't like it, this is at least worth giving a shot. All these movies are worth giving a shot. Either like them or you don't. 
if you don't like them, well, you don't like them. I'm not going to argue that, but if you do like them, great. And I'm not alone on this. Friends of 227 out.